Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask, Heidi. It is Wednesday, the 31st day of July. It's the last day of the month. Harry Potter's birthday today. International Lifeguard Appreciation Day today. It is uh, Le He Hawaii Day today. All right. National Avocado Day. I'm actually a fan of avocados. I know you are. Yeah, I'm not. Heidi's Heidi's not really. She's like, eh. Jump for Jelly Beans Day, Mutt Day, Raspberry Cake Day. That sounds that good. That I would take part shredded in. Shredded Wheat Day. I haven't had that in years. I remember I love as a shredded kid. Wheat. Yeah, I had that a lot. Uncommon Instrument Awareness Day today. And World Ranger Day. All of those things happening on this Wednesday. And I'm so excited to visit with my guest today. We don't really talk to a lot of like musical people unless they're like in a movie or whatever. But this is like an exception that I made because it's Weird Al. I love Weird Al. I mean, how can you not like Weird Al? So yeah. It, again, we don't typically do music stuff, but I'm I've been a Weird Al fan since I was a weird <laughs> little kid, and I got the opportunity to talk to him. So I'm just excited to chat love with Weird him. Al. Coming up in a bit. Charlie has Parkinson's. Recently, Charlie started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing. I'm an avid golfer, and I was going to give it up this year. I just deteriorated that much. Now I'm back to golfing, enjoying it, having a good time. I just can't stress enough how good it is. Click on radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. Now, now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. If you're, pardon the pun, but tired of waking up tired, try waking up to music. According to the researchers at Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology in Australia, they found in a study back in 2020 that waking up to a more melodic alarm improves alertness, while harsh alarm tones cause more grogginess. Do you think so? They point out that while most of us probably appreciate some extra alertness in the morning, the findings are especially important for like emergency workers or anyone else required to wake up at peak alertness at unusual times. The worst noise to wake up to, the worst sound to wake up to, is a, a dog or a cat like vomiting on your bed. Because <laughs> I've had oh. our, our dog was sick one time. I agree I'm with laying that. her peacefully sleeping, and I hear this. <gasps> yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yep. And it sounded like it was right on my head. I'm like, oh, she's like three <laughs> feet away, but that's still too close for comfort. All right. Surveys and studies and such brought to you by bettercreditcards.com. It's rad. It's bad. It's 80s. The coolest rock vacation of the summer. Retro Mania Live. August 21st through 25th, the Mansion Theater. Starring Vince Neal, Bobby Brown, Casey and the Sunshine Band, Night Ranger, Tom Kiefer, Tiffany, Lou Graham, Pauly Shore, celebrity autograph signings, costume parties, and more. Single day tickets on sale now at RetromaniaLive.com. Produced by Branson Star Entertainment. Did you know? Brought to you by Genesis Gold, IRA.com. Heidi, did you know that scientists have partially revived disembodied pig brains? What? 2019, a team at Yale was able to restore partially partial functionality to a brain of a decapitated pig for 10 hours. Wow. Uh, it says uh, the, the, 10 hours after the animal's death. Okay, I'm sorry. Neuroscientist uh, Ninad Seshan who participated in the experiment, explained the results might allow us to better understand how brain cells react to circulatory arrest, uh, test whether some cell functions can be restored in a brain after its death. So I don't know what the plan is, but it sounds like zombies are in the making. We don't know everything, but now we know this. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by Radiosavings.com. Uh, Disney's Inside Out 2 has surpassed Frozen 2 to become the highest grossing animated film in history. So they've done very well with Inside Out 2, and, and that's cool. It looks good. I've not seen it. but I I've, haven't seen it yet yeah, either. I've heard good. really good things. I'm super excited about this. Brendan Fraser has been cast as Dwight David Eisenhower in a new dr uh, historical drama called Pressure. So it's going to be about Normandy and about World War II. So I think this looks Love really Brendan good. Fraser. And Tom Kenny, who is the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, revealed something about the character. He says SpongeBob is autistic. Oh. He elaborated saying that he was uh, recently at a conference and a person who was obviously on the spectrum asked him, hey, is, uh, is SpongeBob autistic? And he goes, um, yeah, you know what? He is. 
So that's okay. kind of interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you can make a cartoon character but autistic, it, uh, but all right. That, I guess it's kind of cool to know. Uh-huh. Big screen, little screen brought to you by Radiosavings.com. Charlie has Parkinson's. He started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing, and he's noticed a difference, even while sleeping. Once I got in bed, I couldn't roll over. I couldn't move. I was just whatever position I was in, just a chore to get out of bed. And now everything is so much better. Click on Radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. Now your scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. All right, if you if we had a webcam right now, I would tell you to watch Heidi's face for this, but we don't have one, so I'm going to watch for you. Here we go. Scientists think cockroach milk could be the superfood of the future. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you did not disappoint. Oh my gosh! <laughs> It is days like today that I do wish we had a webcam, but I'm also not dressed very nice, so I'm also glad we don't. Somebody um, needs to get a handle on these scientists. I don't, I don't think I'm going to participate, even if it is. You could tell me it's amazing. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. You can cross me right off the list. Whose job is it to milk them? I don't know, and I don't care. I'm not interested at all. Oh. So again, scientists think cockroach milk could be a super few. I'm going to have future, to just get so. our own farm because Apparently. I don't trust buying anything yeah. anymore. How do you know there's not cockroach <laughs> milk in any milk you're don't buying? Know. I don't know. It's disgusting. Let's move on to something a little less controversial. The Olympics. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Olympic surfers don't have to worry about those gnarly cardboard beds because they don't have those in Paris. Athletes participating in the surfing events are staying in the French island of Tahiti during the games, 10,000 miles from the rest of the action. A German surfer there, Tim Elter, shared an inside look at his digs in the Polynesian island. TikTok, uh, he showed off his room abroad, and it says, uh, he says, I'll be here for the next couple of weeks. He's got a full-size bed, and it's not made of cardboard. His room is equipped with a balcony overlooking the waters and the beautiful scenery that Tahiti offers. One fan, uh, one fan rather, commented, athletes in Paris will be shook when they see this. So huh. <laughs> apparently their beds are not comfortable. I don't know. I've not seen all the details. but uh, And I've, I've had people talking about the Olympics on social media. I have not participated. And it's not because I have anything against the Olympics. I just don't watch any of that stuff. Right. I'm not a sports guy. I'm not so... If you're looking for some witty comments from me about that, well, I'm sorry. Scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Can your IRA or 401k stand up to the next financial crisis? By allocating a percentage of your retirement into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns. Safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Protect your retirement today with a simple phone call and receive your free gold and silver guide. Call 1-800-200-GOLD or visit GenesisGoldIRA.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. So excited to visit right now with Weird Al Yankovic. Weird Al, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How you doing? Very good. Now, do people call you Weird Al? Do they call you Al? Do they call you Weird? What, is, what do most people call you when they're talking to you? You know, they, I, I, I respond to anything, but um, like Paul Simon says, you can call me Al. <laughs> I love it. That's very good. Now, you've got a new song that just came out, a new polka medley. How long does it take for you to put something like this together? This this is uh, amazing, by the way. Uh, it, it takes longer to get the clearances than it does to actually <laughs> record the song, because uh, it's a dozen different songs of, of uh, uh, the biggest hits of the last 10 years, and uh, we had to get actual sign off from like Taylor Swift and Billie Eilish and, and all these people. And thankfully, they uh, they thought it was a, a kick to be in a Weird Al Polka medley. So we got we got their thumbs up on it all. But uh, it's, a, it's a time intensive process. And it is an absolute honor for people to be put into something like this. And, and hopefully they like that. I had a chance to visit with Greg Kinn from the Greg Kinn Band. And I asked him, I said, hey, when, when Weird Al did Jeopardy, did you did you like that? Because I'm like, I love that song. And he goes, Oh, we love that song. He said it was it was such an honor to have that happen. So hopefully everybody that you're covering feels the same way. They seem to. And I got to say, uh, Greg Ken, I, I love Greg. He's, he's such a great sport. In fact, he was actually in the video for I Lost on Jeopardy. So that was really nice. That was really nice. Nice of him. And you started doing these fun songs back in. I guess we we learned about them in the '80s. Were you doing it before they they became nationally famous? 
you know, I, I made some really bad songs when I was a teenager. I used, used to record <laughs> songs in my bedroom with, with just me and my accordion recording into one of those little tiny uh, cassette tape decks with like a 39 cent compact cassette. Uh, so not not very professional, but Dr. Domeno played some of my stuff on the radio, even though it was, it was awful. Well, and I'm so glad that he did. And I'm glad that the Weird Al phenomenon spread like wildfire. And my wife and I, when we met, there was, you know, all kinds of differences in our lives. One of the things we discovered right away is that we both like Weird Al. And then we went to a Weird Al concert together. So back, you know, 20-some years ago when we were newlyweds, we went to see you in concert. You know, that's that's the most romantic thing you can do with somebody is go to a Weird Al concert. <laughs> well, the, the good news is she thought so. And we're still together. So, <laughs> Oh, good. It's a, it's a good litmus test. Yes, it is. So uh, celebrating 10-year anniversary right now of Mandatory Fun. Does it feel feel like 10 years in my mind it seems like that was just the other day it kind of was just the other day yeah that that passage of time is a pretty crazy thing isn't it yeah <laughs> does your job what you do has it gotten easier over the years or has it gotten harder with the music today compared to the music you know of yesteryear well there, there's always stuff to make fun of pop culture is always silly and there's always something you can tweak and make it funny um it's a little bit harder to figure out what the big pop songs are because like in the in the 80s uh, there was more of a monoculture, you know, where people would watch MTV and the, the songs they got, they got played eight times a day. Well, those were the big hits and everybody knew those. And now everybody's kind of into their own, you know, satellite channel or genre or whatever. It's gotten a bit more fragmented. So it's a little bit harder to figure out, okay, well, is this a hit or is this a hit? And are there some songs that we can talk about that you wanted to do that you didn't get a chance to do? Or can you not even talk about the ones that you didn't get a chance to do? Um, I, I don't like to focus on the negative. I, on, on this new medley, every, every single person cleared it. Everybody was okay with it. The, the one thing, the one I wanted to get on that we weren't able to was, uh, SZA with, the uh, Kill Bill. Uh, and she didn't say no. She just never returned our phone call. So I don't know. Maybe she was busy. <laughs> Maybe she was in the shower for a couple of months. I don't know what the deal was, but she <laughs> never got back to us. But when you think about the people who said yes, like you said, focus on the positive. Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus, Lil Nas X, Billie Eilish, I mean, Adele. I mean, there's some huge names that not only said yes, but I bet they were excited to be part of the Weird Al universe now. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, talk to them directly, but my manager says that we got a very nice response from, from Billie Eilish and Miley Cyrus. They were both very excited uh, to be in the medley. And uh, we've got a, we don't talk about Bruno, which is written by my friend Lynn Man manuel Miranda. So that was the easiest one to get. That was like me texting him and saying, hey, Lynn, can I use your song in my medley? And he was like 30 <laughs> seconds later, of course, of course. I love it. Well, congratulations on all the success you've had being weird and being weird, Al. I think it's awesome. I think it's really exciting. And again, thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. And the all-new medley, Polka Mania, is out right now. I've got a link to the music video and all the information in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Charlie has Parkinson's. Recently, Charlie started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing. I'm an avid golfer, and I was going to give it up this year. I just deteriorated that much. Now I'm back to golfing, enjoying it, having a good time. I just can't stress enough how good it is. Click on radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The five rings of the Olympics symbol represent the five inhabited continents of the world. Africa, America, Asia, Europe, and the Oceanic Australia comp uh, continent. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The Olympic torch is lit the old-fashioned way in a ceremony uh, at the Temple of Hera in Greece Actresses wearing costumes of Greek priestesses are you priestesses or whatever that is uses a mirror and sun ray to kindle the torch while they start to relay that to the host city. Oh wow, that's a lot. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The first official Olympic mascot was Waldi, a Dachshund, a dog, in the 1972 games in Munich. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? From 1912 to 1948, artists participated in the Olympics. Painters and sculptors and architects, writers and musicians, they all competed for medals in their respected fields. That'd be kind of cool. I'm an, uh, I'm an Olympic gold medal painter. <laughs> and our final for today, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? During the 2012 London Games, the Olympic Village required 165,000 towels. It's a bit more than... 
two weeks of activity. So that's a whole lot of towels. Several fun facts. Now you know. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. It's rad. It's bad. It's 80s. The coolest rock vacation of the summer. Retro Mania Live. August 21st through 25th, the Mansion Theater. Starring Vince Neil, Bobby Brown, Casey and the Sunshine Band, Night Ranger, Tom Kiefer, Tiffany, Lou Graham, Pauly Shore, Celebrity Autograph Signing, Costume Parties, and more. Single day tickets on sale now at RetromaniaLive.com. Produced by Branson Star Entertainment. Time now for the Mint Mobile question of the day. It comes your way, courtesy of Mintervention.com. Question for you, Heidi. In a survey of adults, this was found to be the scariest thing in their house while they were growing up, or the scariest place, you might say. Scariest place, the basement. Yes, the basement. Yeah. If I would have said the scariest thing. A lot of people are afraid thing, of the basement. If I would have said the scariest thing, would you still have guessed the basement, or would you have guessed something else? I, I would have I guessed that, something else, I probably. think so, too. I think that was worded weird. Yeah. All right, the basement is the correct answer for today's Mint Mobile question of the day. Comes your way courtesy of Mintervention.com. Charlie has Parkinson's. He started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing, and he's noticed a difference even while sleeping. Once I got in bed, I couldn't roll over. I couldn't move. I was just whatever position I was in, just a chore to get out of bed. And now everything is so much better. Click on radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. Time now for some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. It would appear that Gen Z has had it up to here with dating apps. They'd rather have a chance encounter and an unconventional setting as a way to meet their match. A DatingAdvice.com survey found that preferred methods of finding somebody to date among those age 18 to 27 include at a protest or at a funeral or in virtual <laughs> reality. A funeral? Yeah. You're going to hit on somebody and at a like, funeral? Hey, what are you doing afterwards? What are you doing after this? <laughs> gonna Can I bury grab my you a- grandpa and then... After that, I'm going to do some mourning. That's what I'm going to do. Can I, can I grab you a sandwich? <laughs> I'm sure a sandwich it's and some made punch. Of ham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're burned out by fruitless dating apps. 20 somethings also searching for love in the fruit aisle of the supermarket, hoping to meet a future partner at a social gathering or a bookstore or a local club or in a class. So. Our son is uh, single, and I'm going to have to share that list and tell him, just hang out in the fruit aisle, because that's where chicks are walking by. <laughs> like, walking by like, hey, hey, <laughs> interest you in a watermelon? <laughs> I do think a book club would be a good place for be. him. I think so. Weird News, brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Time now for the list, brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. If you feel sometimes like the Gen Z is speaking a totally different language, maybe they are. I have a whole long list here. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. We've talked about some of these things, you know, things like Riz, which is charisma. Uh, Something slaps. That's a good thing. Uh, Things are low key. Uh, Anything that is sus is like suspicious. Well, a survey showed 83% of Gen Z feel older generations have trouble understanding them. We do. Here's a bunch of the word phrases. Uh, It's giving. That is the tone something emulates. Oh, that's really giving. So emulates. So this is ridiculous. Uh, Why don't you give me the tea on that, Heidi? That's the gossip. Spill the tea, you know, gossip. Mid. That's very mid is mediocre. Eight. Like A-T-E, a showing of admiration for somebody uh, for their success. That is super, uh, don't cap, that means to lie. Fam is short for like family, similar to bro. Lit is something that's exciting or fun. Drip is to be stylish. Airing is to ignore. I'm just going to air that completely. And wow. in your blank era, describing chronic emotions or preferences a person has. And then mother is a female status symbol. So it's not necessarily your real mother, but any female status symbol is... I see. I see. She's so mother. I've got the list in the show notes. You can I wish check they it out. I just learn how to speak. <laughs> yeah, that works too. You can find it in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Can your IRA or 401k stand up to the next financial crisis? By allocating a percentage of your retirement into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns. Safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Protect your retirement today with a simple phone call and receive your free gold and silver guide. Call 1-800-200-GOLD or visit GenesisGoldIRA.com. 
Welcome. Time now for the quote of the day. It comes your way courtesy of Radiosavings.com. Quote today comes from Mindy Kaling who says, Best friend isn't a person, it's a tear. So you have multiple best friends. You know, mm-hmm. the friends are here and then best friends get they're up here. Okay. So what do you think, Heidi? Do you have multiple best friends? No, I don't have really any friends. You You're do my best too. friend. Well, I was going to say, you have many other best friends. I as really well. don't. You have, have a lot friends. of friends. I have nobody. Who do I hang out with? Well, you hang out mainly with me because you. With you, because you're when, my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> so when I'm like, you should hang out with her. She's awesome. And you're like, eh, I'm going to just stay home. <laughs> so don't blame anyone, else, nobody else but you. All right. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by The John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying The John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of GenesisGoldIRA.com. Kind of a cool story here from Dallas, Texas. Two old friends reunite in an Uber ride. And it was all ca- caught on video, which is kind of cool. So you can actually watch this happen. Two old friends reunite during a ride. Uh, one was driving, the other was riding. John Johnson, 60, had booked an Uber ride to Dallas UT Southwestern Medical Center when his driver, Danny Blayton, age 51, picked him up, started chatting a little bit, and then they exchanged some pleasantries. Johnson felt a sense of familiarity. He said, uh, familiarity. He said, what's your name again? And he goes, my name is Danny. He goes, I think I know you. <laughs> you know me. And as they started chatting, they found out that, yeah, absolutely, I know you. They had a lot to catch up on. Their friendship dated back to the late 1990s when Johnson was head of security and Blayton was a bartender at the same Dallas nightclub. Oh, fun. During the ride, the friends reminisced about old times and shared memories of loved ones, some of whom have since passed. The reunion was such a special moment that Blayton decided to share it with the world. He posted the video of their emotional reconnection on TikTok where it quickly went viral, garnering over, ready for this, 10 million views. Both were elated by it. And uh, to see all the positive comments that it got, he said, just people saying, this is my favorite video. And how many people have now watched it has been just so positive. So I think that's really neat. Have you ever done that before where you're talking to somebody and you realize, wait a minute, I know who you are and you know who I am. Have no, did- I don't ever rem- remember <laughs> anybody. You know that. I was just gonna say. I was gonna say if she did say I've, that, I've had that happen. It's, I was gonna say only because I pointed it out. <laughs> she has. I'm serious. I'm positive. It's Heidi really has, bad. She has face blindness. Yeah. That is a thing, and I'm sure she has it. Yeah, uh, it's but yeah, bad. there are times that we'll be chatting with somebody, and then halfway through the conversation, <laughs> she does realize who she's talking to because I drop enough hints, and she's like, "Oh, I know who you are." Yeah. All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show.